Hello with the History Hikers, I'm Dries and I'm Jente. Welcome to the Chateau du Ochsenstein, which is actually a three-in-one package deal. Let's take you along. Welcome to a very misty morning in Alsace. The first castle of Ochsenstein was probably built somewhere in the 12th century when we have a first mention of a lord of Ochsenstein. It was built to defend the passage from Alsace to Lorraine through the Vosch mountains. As said, Ochsenstein actually comprises three separate castles and was seen as such during the Middle Ages too. A good example is a division of the domains of Otto I of Ochsenstein in 1217 between his sons. The eldest son received the main castle named Der Feltz or the Rock, with the second son receiving the castle of Wachelheim being the castle on the rock in the middle these days. There was no mention of the third and largest castle, which is where we are now, which indicates it probably wasn't built yet. These two castles are barely visible today, which is why this video is limited to the main castle to the south, which was built later in the 13th century and is known as Grand Ochsenstein. Building a castle here is such a smart move. On the one hand you have the perfect platform to build your keep, and on the other it's a great natural vantage point. This rock also functions as one of the walls for the lower courtyard, where you can house the common folk and stables and such. It also offers an added line of defense when attacked. These days the courtyard has a tower and several walls still visible as well as the dry moat. Most impressive is the south wall which housed the gate. There are also holes cut into the large rock which probably held the joists of a building. The power of the Ochsenstein family grew during the 13th century as they entered an alliance with the Habsburgs. Under the wing of the Holy Roman Emperor, the Lord of Ochsenstein was granted the title of Landvogt of Alsace and Brisgau, which is basically a sort of provincial governor of the Holy Roman Empire.
Steps built into the sandstone rock lead us up to the main castle. The north of this large rock held the donjon or keep with the kitchen attached. Notice the sink-like stone still visible today. At the other end of the rock we find a large polygonal building with a cistern. As we say in Dutch, hoge bomen vangen veel wind, or tall trees catch a lot of wind, meaning that as you get more prominent, you attract more attention, mostly negative. The same was true for the Lord of Ochsenstein. Over the next two centuries, their neighbors would attack and destroy the castle several times until the Lord of Ochsenstein had to sell his holding to pay his death in 1527. The castle was described as dilapidated at this time. From the polygonal room you can climb up to a small room which probably corresponded to the castle chapel. Pay attention to the ribs of the vaulted ceiling which are still partially visible. This cistern is still sort of functional, as it still has its sump, can still hold rainwater, which can be filtered with a filtration system, and can discharge water if it overflows. In the middle of the 16th century, the castle was bought by a new lord who decided to restore it, which is also when it was adapted for gunpowder weaponry. In the winter of 1559, the Lord was ready to move into his new home. The servants are put to work to heat up the castle, leading to a large fire that destroys it instead. An ironic end to an impressive castle. Thank you so much for watching. Time for the arbitrary subjective castle score. And I'm gonna say a seven and a half. Really love how the castle follows the rocks and those red rocks in the Elsass. What do you think? I'll go even higher and say an eight. Because there were still some really cool details left to be seen. All right. Leave your score in the comments. And otherwise, like, comment, subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.